This is Gordon Pepper. And all I have to say is, wow. We just got done with the semifinals. Outrage defeated DC Mafia by one pin. And if you're saying to yourself, wait a second, overall total win doesn't matter in this format because the format's there. Technically, you are correct. Total win does not matter unless there is a complete tie on the points, which is exactly what happened. It was 12-9 on points from Outrage on the scratch side, 12-9 on points from DC Mafia on the handicap side. If Lee Holmes Jr. throws a strike, DC Mafia advances. Not only does he not throw a strike, he leaves a ridiculous split, and so therefore goes to overall wood, which is won by Outrage by a pin. Now that everybody knows the rules, here's how this goes. But again, for everybody that's just tuning in, I'm going to repeat everything because you never know. We may have to do this again. Wouldn't that be fun to do this again? Yes. Okay, good. So here's how this works. There are two games that are being thrown. One game on the scratch side, one game on the handicap side. If a team wins both the scratch and the handicap, it's over. You don't have to go to bonus points. If there is a split and one team wins the scratch and one team wins the handicap, it does not go to total wood yet. It does go to the positionings of how well you bowl. So six points for first, five for second, four for third, three for fourth, two for fifth, one for sixth. Whoever gets more points out of that will advance but in this case it is not about advancement because this is the finals so whoever has the most points it is game set match and more importantly ten thousand dollars now if there is a tie on specific place then it to goes to overall and total wood and again just a reminder it's not just about winning it is about placement so, so you're saying, well, you want to win as much as possible. Well, sure you do, obviously, duh. But it's not, it is more important that all three bowlers win as much as they can over the opposing team. So right now, Justin Urbano's got a mini split. We have one open and two strikes over an outrageous side. Urbano right now, that's a quick split that can be converted. However, uh, Paul Smith with a split that uh, is going to be a lot harder to convert. He leaves the 4-6. Starting over here, Dennis B. Sinet with a very sloppy strike, but that looks good. It doesn't matter how the pins fall as long as they fall. Bot Nation right now has got a couple of splits they need to deal with. Justin Urbano is not going to make his, and Paul Smith is not going to make his either. So now an early lead on the scratch side for Outrage. Not an early lead yet on the handicap side because both teams right now have an open. Outrage with a slight advantage because they're starting with two strikes versus one spare. Well, now their pins have vanished. Now Outrage is up on both. Another open. So right now, Mop Nation Militia, one, two, three potential opens in the first frame. Not looking very good. Brian Oppy right now. Oh, we almost had four opens over there by Mop Nish, and we don't. We got an eight pin. This is a makeable spare if he got the right angle, but he doesn't. Now, again, understand, get the wood. However, and I know this is early, but I'm going to harp on this. Chris Larson over on the handicap side from Mop Nation Malipa. Not Mop Nation Malipa. Good. Mop Nation Militia. Good job, Gordon. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> However, he's got six, and it is important, again, because if there happens to be a split, it's going to depend on placement. And I say this like I'm a broken record because this is exactly what happened on the semifinals match. Right now, looking for a spare. Got it. Brian Bennett with a spare, and now Mop Nation has got strikes all over the place in the second frame on the scratch side. KV right now. His ball is, I don't know what his ball is doing, but it's missing the head pin. KV looks like he needs a GPS at this moment. I'm not sure if that helps. We'll find out. So three strikes in a row for Mott Nation on the scratch side. 
We'll see what Outrage can do. Same shot, Richard Drum Jr. for Outrage, looking for his first double. Does not look like he's got it. He doesn't, 10 pin. Meanwhile, Justin Urbano, four pin. Cavey okay, looking to make the spare. I think he will, and he does. At least for Cavey, his ball is hooking and he knows how to usually make spares if he makes something that's leavable. Again, Cavey may need a GPS system. Ray Marsh, up for outreach. Ray Marsh has been in this position, oh, many times. Three times as a member of the Garden Foundation. A couple more times as part of Mont Nation Militia. Ray Marsh, a new entrant into the Hall of Fame. And if you look over here, he's only adding to the resume. And you can see why he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Marsh looking for the first double of anybody. And there it is. Ray Marsh again, showing why he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. There's a double. Larson looking to uh, make a strike here of his own. He won't do that. Seven pin. Double right now. Humigani Jr. Outrage right now. Up by 22 on scratch. And up by a little bit on the handicap. But not a lot. Jason Howard can change that here. If he throws another strike, they're up 5-2. to two. And then all of a sudden, they're up by 20 pins on both sides. That being said, that doesn't happen. Two, four, eight, that is a makeable spare, as Chris Larson makes his spare. Oppie with a seven pin lead. Richard Jerome Jr. looking to double, uh, I'm sorry, not double, get a strike. And he's happy there, gets a strike. He says it is a delicious strike. You know, we did a uh, advertising promo for the sports bar earlier. They have great ribs. We have a spare by Dennis Bissonette. Now, Mob Nation Militia has got three strikes in the second. They need to convert to double in the third. So far, they have not done that. And I say that because Hubie Gage Jr. could convert on his, which again will start to give Outrage a bigger lead. I'll be right here, third frame, looking for his first strike. Actually, nobody on the handicap side for Outrage until that. I don't know what you call that. A Sona strike until now. Oppie with a strike. McGaney with a 247. So this is going back and forth. Neither team has figured out what the lane conditions are yet. KV will make a spare. Two in a row for KV. Spares, that is. He's called Pumpkin Spice. I'm pretty sure I don't want to know what that means. Though right now, the way he's feeling, it could be Old Spice. <laughs> Thank you here. I will be here all week, or at least all weekend. Justin Urbano looking for his first strike of this game, and that doesn't sound like he's got it, and he does not. He's got an ugly mess instead. Actually, the nine pin goes down. All right, that's makeable, seven pin. McGinney makes his. That will be three marks there. OB. Mop already's got three marks on the board. They can make it five with a strike here from Paul Smith. Again, if they can convert, they can start at least cutting into Outrage's early lead. Speaking of which, that sounds funky for Ray, but he's out of trouble. Ray March 3 6. Urbano's looking to make the spare. That ball looks like it'll turn correctly. It will. It will do that. Meanwhile, Ray Smarch is looking to make his his mark in this game. Or in this case, his spare in this game. That would be his first spare. He started with a double. And he'll make the spare. Outrage right now. They are down by two. And they will stay down by two. Strike by Chris Larson. Jason Howard, if he can throw a strike, that'll keep them even three marks apiece on the handicap side. Then we'll move over to the fourth frame on the scratch side. Both scratch and handicap moving at around the same pace because they're going quickly on a lot of strikes thrown. Three on three on the same side. That is a less than 10 pin lead. And uh, we have Aaron Major using a word that I will not repeat here. But the definition is, yipes, I left the seven pin. And you can figure out what that all means. 
Meanwhile, Ryan Bennett leaves the 247. Going back and forth over here. Mob Nation, of course, could have taken the lead with the strike, which is why we got that from Aaron Major. Instead, Outreach has a chance to build on their lead if Richard Drum Jr. doubles. And they also have a chance to build on their lead if we get an open from Aaron Major, but they won't. Aaron will make the spare. Drum's looking to double. And Bennett's looking to make the spare. Bennett does that. A double will increase the lead on the scratch side for Outrage. And we'll see if Richard Drone Jr. does that. Meanwhile, a double on the handicap side over from Ryan Oppie. And Mont Nation is looking to try to get the lead back. Right now, lead held by Outrage, but not by much. Back and forth, this match is going to go. Neither, nobody really seems to have a complete grasp on uh, what the line is. Now that I just said that, double from Richard Jerome. Very different contrast to what happened in the semifinals where everybody came out blazing. Finals right now, everybody's a little bit more tentative. That being said, there's Justin Urbano's first strike on the handicap side. And Mop Nation's razzing him a little bit for it, but all the pins go down, so it looks good. Grace Marsh right now leaves a little mini bucket. He's not thrilled about that. Two, four, five, eight. Again, right now, I'm not really gonna talk about placement until we get to the halfway mark. And, and to be quite honest, both matches are way too tight to call. Outrage is gonna be up by around 20 pins in the scratch side, handicap side. Mop Nation's gonna be, ay, I was gonna say they're gonna be up by the same amount, but I see a one, two, four, six, ten big wash by Chris Larson. Larson quickly hasn't figured this out. Quickly, Ray Smarsh hasn't figured it out completely either, but he's made a spare. Now, looking at the scores. Double from Jason Howard. And 4-3, Outreach will take the lead back in handicap. That is assuming that Larson does not make the spare, and he won't. Humigaini leaving the seven pin. We're going to stay in handicap momentarily here. See what Jason Howard does. He wasn't happy with that shot, but he was very happy with his result. 4 3 run for Outrage on the handicap side. They're going to go back and take the lead. Going back over to scratch. Humigaini Jr. looking to make the seven. If he does, Outrage will take a little bit less than 10 pin lead. Actually, it'll be a little bit less than 20 pin lead. He will make it, and here we go. Right now, Outrage is up by 20 on both Scratch and Handicap. And we finally get a strike on the board by Brian Cavey. And everybody loves it, especially Cavey. I'm, I'm going to ask Cavey a couple of questions here. So I'm, I'm going to ask Brian a couple of questions since now this mic's portable and I can move around a little bit. Pardon me. I'm, Brian, i got to ask you something. You finally threw a strike. Does that mean you get rewarded with dinner? Yes, I was, I've been waiting for my dinner. That was the whole problem here. Oh, that was the problem. You're not being fed well enough. Now I'm good. Now I got some food in my system. I'll be back here tomorrow after this evening. Okay. So I'm being held by Tom Twist. I got a message from him. So right now, we have, are they going to make this? No. So by an oppie right now with an 88 on the handicap side with today 104. And again, placement is important. But Jerome Jr. now with the spare. Now, as you can see over here, you have the intensity that happened over in the semifinals. Finals more of a gentlemanly, sounds like there's a fun matchup. And I have a feeling that there may have been talk of a potential split, which, again, if you look at it, if you're splitting the money, that's a lot of money. So I could understand if the teams are gonna split and you got 5,000 apiece. That being said, you're still playing for a title. And again, one of the things that I know from Outrage is that they want the three set this year. And in order for them to get the three set, they need to win this. Jason Howard right now looking to add, and he will. There's another strike, three in a row. 
And I think if they did agree to a split, Mop Nation Militia is going to be very happy about that because they're falling apart here on the handicap side. You've got a mark of four with Outrage, who is already up by 40, and they're, and they're looking to blow this one open. Oh, almost made the spare. Does not. All right, so I think what's going to wind up happening, there's a emergency situation going on, so I may have to do double duty here and run both, which I think I'm going to do, which means... I may. I would not interview with you. You're going to have a lot of very negative things to say. Good, right? Okay. So right now we're doing two at the same time, and part of the reason is that there has been an emergency situation for Malachi, and I hope that everything is okay with everybody over here. We're going into the second half of our finals, and right now it has been all outrage on the handicap side. From Not Nation Militia to have any hope, they've got to be working on that scratch side. And right now, they are not. It looks like they're up by 22. However, both two of their bowlers have already gone. So technically, Outrage is still up by around 20 pence. And if it stays like this, and there's no reason to think why it won't, Outrage will have, will have gotten one third of that set, which is what they're looking for, which is 10K here. Uh, a lot of money on the uncapped. Uh, on the uncapped team event, which is going to happen tomorrow, and then the Wilder Trophy, should they win the final four or one of their final four match on Saturday, and then win in the finals on Sunday. Now, and the other reason why I say if it continues like this, because let's just say there is a tie, Mob Nation happens to pull it out on the scratch side. With the demolition of what's going on on the handicap side, and again, placement counts here. So right now, Outrage has got the first, the second, and the third spot on the handicap side. In order for Mop Nation to pull off the tie, they must have the first, second, and third highest score on the scratch side. Which right now isn't happening. I mean, Ryan Bennett right now with an open. However, Richard Rome Jr. and Humigany looks like that they're going to be outpacing Small Smith. So basically, they need anybody on Outrageous side to do better than anybody on Mop Nation Militia side. Richard Jerome with a strike here, but let's look at Humagini Jr. It's big with a double. So, that's the position that we're in right now. If Humagini Jr. shoots the double, and, and again, they're still up on scratch. So if Outrage wins on scratch, then positioning doesn't matter, points doesn't matter. And what we had during the semifinals, which was a very, very tight match, we are not going to have the finals, which is right now turning into a laugher, especially on the, on the handicap side. So let's see what happens. And, oh, I thought that was a double by Hugh, but it's not. We got a tip in. Oh my goodness, so anyway, what's going on here? Somebody yelling, saying, somebody throw a bleeping strike. Oh wait, it's Joey Naru. Hi, Joey. All right, nice for Joey to show up. If we can flip the, the uh, camera over here. There's Joey Naru, and people are trying to point Joey in my direction because I'm talking directly to him. And I want Joey to come hang out over here. I'm gonna give Joey a headset. This is, this is going to be entertaining television at its finest over here because not only are we going to be doing double simulcast with UBA Amble TV, we're going to be doing it with Joey Neuer as well. Hi, Joey. How you doing? I'm, I'm great, Gordon. How are you? I'm, I'm actually really tired, but that's okay. 
It's okay. So right now we have dual simulcast. I don't think this has happened in the history of the UBA, but hey, there's a first time for everything. Also, congratulations on Mop Nation Militia for getting to the finals. Thank you. I was over at uh, Bolero working, and I left them to handle things. Seems they handled things pretty well. I mean, hopefully we can get a run here the last five frames and get back in it. If not, it's a good run to get here. I mean, I'm proud of the guys for stepping up, which they always do anyway. Yeah, they actually, if you just came in, Outrage won their match. And it was obviously they won. That's why they're here. But it was tied on points. It came down to overall wood. Outrage won by one pin on the overall wood. That is why they're here. Mop Nation had a much easier time of it. They did split, but they had the they had the positioning points well in hand before that point. But yeah, one pin difference either way. Yeah, I, I didn't. I knew that we won. They they told me that that we won, and that was all I knew. I didn't hear any details or anything, so I was just happy with that. <laughs> Apparently so is Mont Mason Militia because it looks like they're taking a siesta in the finals. What's going on here? I just walked in. I don't know. You tell me what's going on here. What's going on right here is that you got Justin Urbano with an 85 and I believe the sixth frame. So that that's not very good. Right now all three of them are getting pounded by outrage. And for order for your team to have a chance at this, they've got to do the same. And all three of them need to be better than all three of outrage on the scratch side. Two of your bullers are doing that. One of your bullers is not. And if Paul Smith cannot beat any of Outrage and this stays the same, it is game over and Outrage wins the title. You know, the Outrage is a great team. They We've crossed paths before. Um, I think we're one and one. I think they beat us once. I know we beat them at uh, Carolier a long time ago. Um, they got a lot of the same guys, honestly, and they're just a very, very good team. And quite frankly, after bowling 150 in the quarters yesterday, I didn't think that we were going to get here. So I, I'm happy. I'm beyond happy. I'm, I'd like for us to keep, you know, building a resume, continuing to be successful. We've got things like, you know, the Hall of Fame in our, on our, uh, on our, uh, on your our agenda. List, our agenda, yes, thank you. And things like this will hopefully only add to that. Well, let's put it this way. One of the things that I spoke to Paul Smith about uh, during the interviews before the match. Last year, you guys learned a lot, and I mean a lot, from coming down here. And it's been evident this year, the growth that you guys had, the jumping that you guys had, as you said. You're going to make some nice coinage out of this just by getting to the finals. And other bowlers, because I've seen what they've been bowling at Battle Bowl, much better now than they did. Next year, is that the year that you guys take the next step? I mean, we, we try. You guys took a big step this year. Yeah, we, we try to step a little bit every year. And you're, you're absolutely right about last year. We got our, our doors blown off, let's be honest about it. And the, we didn't have a. We had one team win the, uh, the franchise trios last year, but other than that, we didn't show up much at all. This year, we've got a lot more going on, a lot more better bowling, a lot more showing up. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully next year, maybe grab a major or get back into the, the conversation for winning our district because, you know, second every year, it's a nice little bit of coin, just like second here is a nice little bit of coin. But, I mean, we'd like some trophies or, you know, some more banners too. <laughs> Nothing wrong with banners. You got an Elite Eight one from last year. Why not get more? Right. I mean, we have a couple, like I said, a couple of uh, district titles going back. But, you know, let's let's start adding to that again you know we might i don't want to say retool we've got plenty of talent our our guys are all and our girls as well we're all family we all get along real well the chemistry is great but you know every team needs a tweak here a tweak there so you know maybe we add a couple of pieces and that helps get a uh, get us over the hill yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say retool at all. I would say maybe retinker, maybe, maybe, maybe like just making one of those turns of the uh, wrench a little bit. Maybe get a re-wrenching going on. Maybe, maybe it's just like a different bowling ball, a different look, a different whatever. That's there. I mean, you're right there, to be quite honest. As you've said, you've finished in second at everything. You're still making a lot more money than what you put in. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, so great. We're making money. That's That's, you know part of the plan it's a good thing for us but like i said we want to uh 
we want to add to the resume and we've got things on our agenda that we I don't want to say need to check off but we're, we're getting to a point where we know we can we know we're successful every year we want to be a little more than successful we want to do what you know what outrage is doing we want to do what DGF did what was it four years ago and, and I know you know all about that so I do indeed it, it's just it's a little tinker like you said and to get us to that that next spot and we've got plenty of guys the guys that are here are plenty talented strike plenty and it's just oh it, it's just getting getting past that that spot that we're at now or that rut that we're it's not a rut i mean finishing second isn't a rut right i wouldn't consider that a rut at all i would say it's a very successful season now it's just you're like at the precipice that's what i would say you're at the precipice and now you need that extra oomph to get you over it right it's it's just getting over that spot exactly so, okay so while we're chatting right now let's let's sort of chat with everybody and see what we're doing over here scratch is still very close it looks like right now Mop Nation still has the lead. They're up by around 25. On the handicap side, Outrage well in control. And, and again, the bigger issue that, that Mop Nation has is that they've got two bullers that are doing, oh, uh, yuck. I believe that would be the correct phrase, would be yuck. I mean, you can say they're bowling like Joey did last night. It, it's okay. We, we can all be I was not going to go there. We're all, we're all friends here. We can all be honest with one another. They're bowling like Joey did last night. And they, they held me up last night. So, Well, know, no, I can't even say they're bowling like you did. You shot a 150. Uh, two of your bowlers are going to need marks to beat you on that. So they're making you look real good with that 150 at this moment. I, I mean. One of them may not get to a 150 with handicap. Uh... Oh yeah. Oh, all right. Let's, let's leave that alone. <laughs> so let's see. So handicap side again now. Believe it or not, even though this looks like a blowout, now I got to figure out the points here. Because well, I mean it's it's not much in terms of the points. Paul Smith is looking very good. So is everybody else. Your biggest problem, if I should say anything, is Rich Jerome. Because again, as I said. Mop Nation's got a sweep on scratch because it looks like they're going to get swept on handicap. Richard Drum Jr., if he goes out the door, it's a 259. That is guaranteed to beat at least two of Mop Nation, and in that case, it will be over. Correct. So I, I guess, much as I like Rich, I guess I'm hoping he doesn't throw the first one. <laughs> you're, you're hoping that he takes a trip to the Episcopalian Palace, a.k.a. the Greek Church. I, I wasn't going to go that far, but... But you need him to. Well, yeah, correct. Or go golfing and go four. four. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I yelled four on a telecast. So. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna say so let's unfortunately I do have to mention this for television purposes here. So Brian Oppie only finishes seventy port fins under his average with a one sixty nine with handicap and a one fifty three scotch. Did you be at least beat the one fifty three? Uh, I barely beat the 153, yes. But when I was bowling the 159 last night, he was bowling 230. So, you know, it... Yeah, but you beat him now, though. Well, yeah, correct. I beat him. And if Justin opens, you're going to beat him also. Uh, that's also correct. Even if Justin marks, you still may beat him based on count. So now here's the thing. We're, we're all staying in the same house, so... <laughs> I should stop because I, I don't want to get beat up in my sleep or anything tonight. <laughs> you, you don't want to see going... One, two, Freddy's coming for Joey. Correct. Three, four, I better lock my doors. Yeah, three, four, lock your door. Five, six, call Motel 6, you know, <laughs> stuffing like that. So, all right, now it comes down to Richard Jerome because uh, we're, we're looking at this. 187 is obviously not going to beat anybody on Ryan Bennett's side. So now it's going to come down to Richard Barone, and he's got to, uh, Richard Barone, Richard Jerome, and he's got to beat somebody. Dennis finishes with a 229. Scratch side, no problem for Mop. Problem, uh, handicap side. And I mean, major, major, big problem. All right, here's Richard Jerome. He can salt away the game for outrage, and it looks like he's going to. <laughs> well, that, that is sort of Richard's slang name, but I'm not going to be mentioning that on either 
broadcast what he's being called right now. I'll just say Mr. Nixon, and I will just end it with that. But yeah, that, that effectively should end the game, assuming that the gutter monster doesn't come out and go, mmm, this looks tasty. Yeah, that's about all we've got. <laughs> that, that, that's all you have that's now. All we've got. Because let's put it this way, that garbage 213 with handicap is still going to be better than anything that Mop's going to put up the, on the board in the handicap side. The best that Mop can do with handicaps at 206. And it looks like, again, uh, outrage all over that, all three guys, which means that, that Mop's got to take all three guys on the scratch side. And as we already mentioned, that will not happen. Richard Drum Jr. is going to finish in the 250s. And that will be good enough. Actually, that will be good enough for first. Out of everybody, 259. So, looking over here, I'm waiting for the scores to come in ju just for the official, unofficial results. So, you're going to have six. Well, the final point total really is going to depend on what Hugh does. But I'll tell you, obviously, right now, it, the game is over. Every, everything is over at this point. Yeah, that handicap air is not looking. That like, handicap is looking. Mi no, it, it does not. Aside from Jason Howard. Any strikes anywhere, so. <laughs> Jason Howard will strike anywhere. I saw him strike a bit at Nationals, too. Uh, a few weeks ago. He he strikes everywhere. Speaking of striking everywhere. Yeah, that that, that strike from Hugh and, and uh, that actually I'm trying to figure out did Outrage win Scratch? They may have stolen Scratch in which case I don't it's good that I don't have to carry care about points and tiebreakers or anything else. Because it will be over because if you win both the Scratch and the Handicap actually I don't know yet it depends on what Paul Smith does. Now, if Paul Smith opens, that sort of ends my misery, and I don't have to do any math whatsoever. And, of course, he's not. He's going to make my life miserable and throw a strike, and yes, he will. Keep doing math. <laughs> I had to do a bolero. You do some math now, too. <laughs> oh, make me do math. Boo! All right, so let's see. If, and, and what makes it worse is that if he goes out the door, it's a 224, which, of course, is going to tie. So now we have half points. Thanks for dealing with the half points, buddy. Even though I had to do very, very quick math over at um, over in the semifinals. So let's see, what do we have here? Actually, my math's going to be real simple. Oh, so we have a tie. So, okay, so we have a 205 in the handicap. And they're already over that. So we've got the maximum over on Outrageous side. So they went 15 to 6. Quitter. Which means, as I said before, in order for this to happen, somebody on scratch uh, needs, actually nobody on scratch needs to beat anybody, and that obviously is not going to happen. Richard Jerome Jr., 259, that's good. Six points there. Uh, second place is there. That's six. That's five. Four, three. That'll be three and a half, three and a half, two and one. So we have six, three and a half, and one. That's ten and a half points over there and of course that more than wraps it up congratulations to outrage they will have one third of the three setter they will win the brawl for it all your thoughts sir you got to give credit where it's due uh outrage like i said great team another great performance from them um you know we've got the singles for all of us to bowl tomorrow we've got the uncapped to bowl tomorrow so and we finished second in the uncapped last year. Actually, that was the outrage too, wasn't it? Um, yes, it was the outrage also. Yeah. So surprise, surprise. Right. So let's go get a win in the uncapped tomorrow. I mean, what can you do? You know, back to the drawing board, and we'll come. We'll come get them tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much. I wish you good luck. So for, again, congratulations on this. It's a nice chunk of change. I'm looking over here with the change being counted. Yes. So that, that looks very, very nice. Now, how does it feel to, again, have one-third of what I was called, being called by Outreach, the three set? One-third done. Two-thirds to go. Well, I mean, we started out this season with uh, a number one goal in mind, which we're still going to be working towards tomorrow night. Um, this is the second time that UBA has run, won the, run the brawl, excuse me, and we won it both times. So that's 
a nice feather to have in, you know, team's cap, team's going into the Hall of Fame tomorrow, deservedly so. Uh, Some guy named Ray also? Uh, yeah, I mean, if I don't get myself thrown out for yelling at everybody, like I was before, but we'll leave that alone. Um, yes, so that'll, that'll be an honor as well, but it's always a pleasure to bowl with these guys. This guy, the guys on Mop are great bowlers, are good guys, and uh, it was fun. I mean, it's an interesting format where you feel like you are losing, but you're winning, and it could change real fast, and total pins don't matter, but then they do matter. It's, it's an interesting setup when you're used to the, you know, every month you bowl the same 10, 10, 10, and 10 for total wood, and you do that over and over and over again. It's nice to have something different. So let's look ahead because you got a couple of things that you got to be looking ahead to. Number one, I'm assuming you're going to be in the uncapped squad. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in the uncapped squad. I mean, you're going to see the same six people you see here. And then, uh, I mean, we've won it the last two years, so you're going to see pretty much the same lineup. Uh, we happen to be pretty comfortable in this building, so we have a few lefties that like to strike, and it makes up for some of our right handed boo boos, and we get through. Yeah, I was, I was going to talk about that handicap. It seemed like. Uh, I could have called the struggle bus to come pick everybody up. What the heck was going on there? Well, I mean, uh, that pair, I mean, we, these are pairs that just kept, we're getting oiled over and over and sitting around. And, I mean, it's, people have been bowling here since 9 o'clock this morning. And they were, they were pretty, pretty bad out there. I mean, it wasn't a very high-scoring pair. And it was just kind of, I mean, I, I didn't have an open, but I only bowled 190. It was just a matter of staying out of your own way. One of the things that's impressive that outreach is really good at is you don't beat yourselves. And when it's a grind like this, it's almost you guys are always going to have the advantage because of how technical you are. You don't let that stuff get you mentally. You're just like, all right, fine. I guess I'll go make the spare. Well, I mean, I, you know, I bowled on two teams in this organization. It's pr pretty much the same thing for both. Guys that bowled on DGF, guys that bowl mop, guys that bowl on uh, outreach, they bowl pretty much every weekend somewhere on some type of condition. And... You know, they might not look like the best bowlers, but they know how to kind of grind if they need to try to bowl a 190. And that's what Brian and I did. And Jason had a good look on the left, and he bowled a 230, and the rest is history. Rich bowled a great game, 250. That, that was good. That's something else I want to bring up since you're here, and let's talk about tomorrow. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room in the form of Murder, Inc. That versus that, I already think that's going to be the match of the year. That may be the match of Battle Bowl. There's a lot on the line. There's a lot of history on the line. You're looking at two teams that have won the last two Wilder Cups. Talk to me about that. Well, I mean, uh, being as I'm from the New Jersey Northwest, uh, you know, my previous team, I bowled Murder Inc. a lot of times. So I'm not going to be, you know, it's not going to be any, any different trip for me. Uh, you know, outrage has been through the war, so they're not, they're going to be prepared for it. Um, you know, they want to, like I've said before, I think outrage and DGF are the two best teams that ever been in the organization. I'm sure there's other teams that might think they are. Murder Inc. probably thinks that they should be in that conversation. So, if they're able to do what they think they can do, maybe they'll be in that conversation. But we, we're uh, we're looking to be on lanes 13, 18 on Sunday, as I told you the other day. That's our goal when we came in. So. Um, uh, the the, um, the Moore team gave us a great, I don't even know why I forgot their name, but uh, they bowled great. I mean, they never backed down. They hung in there. The handicap three pair, I mean, put up a big game, big run. And uh, it was a good match. That could have went either way. Any of these matches go either way. It's just a matter of having the, the ability not to fold under pressure, and hopefully we don't do that tomorrow. There you go. Now I know that uh, people want to go grab a picture with your team, which is well deserved. So, last question: Any shout outs? Anything you want to say? Any final words? Uh, I'm looking forward to getting home, seeing my wife and kids, and my bed. There's my <laughs> shout out. There you go. Shout out to Race Marsh's bed. Ray, again, congratulations.